shifting slightly. <laughs> Sorry, it's interesting just getting the camera set up right. Um, welcome to episode number 615. Uh, topic today is um, why do you keep believing in lies? Yeah, we're going to have some fun with this. Well, it won't necessarily be fun, but it's going to be in, in, in a way, it's, it's a junk to what I said to about yesterday, but a little different. So before I jump into the topic, let me choose myself. Hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and that inspired these talks I started over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And so today is episode number 614, 15, I just lost track of which one it was. But the title today is, I, uh, Why Do You Still Believe in Lies? Because many people do. And I'm going to keep this around the area of dating, although I'm sure there's some people who might think it may be political, but it's not. Um, oh, it's so tempting. No, no, I won't go there. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep this on the um, relationship-centric conversation. I'm particularly going to start with the dating profile, the infamous dating profile on whether it's on Tinder or Match or dating apps, dating sites, whatever it is, even on matchmaking profiles as well, is how much of it is absolutely um, prose, fictional bullshit, <laughs> to be blunt. How much, is, how much do you, for example, well, no, actually, no, no let me be polite. People you may know or somebody you may have dated, if you read through their profile, on the dating site, for example, or dating app, and you scan through the information, and then you know them who they are for real, and you compare the two, and you realize there's such a discrepancy there. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Is this um, fictitious presentation we have? Now, I'm, I'm talking about this from two angles, because one of them is people upsell themselves to be better than they really are, and you may have noticed this yourself in your own dating experiences, but also, which I want to get into more accurately, because yes, people do tend to try and upsell to be better, more presentable, and trying to get what they trying to be um, taken more seriously than they really are, for example. But a lot of people also downplay and undersell themselves, which is a much more challenging thing. What I believe firmly is for a lot of people out there, they don't believe they can have what they want, so they will continually shoot themselves in the foot by downplaying who they are and making up lies about themselves in their profiles, in their interactions, that don't tell the truth about their power. And this is one of those um, naughty little problems. Hi Della, nice to see my broadcast. Oh, quick reminder, if you're watching this on YouTube, it was on Facebook first. <laughs> I do this Facebook Live at 5 p.m. Pacific time, and I'll tell you more about that at the back end, and it goes onto YouTube later on, as well as onto my podcast. But that's, a dis that's for later on. So a lot of people I know, um, have doubts about their ability to catch, to, I was going to say catch, that's the wrong word, have a lot of, a lot of doubts about their ability to have the relationship they really want. I mean, phrase it a bit more accurately and coherently. And largely because they don't believe in themselves. And part of that is definitely tied to relationship experience. And again, yesterday I talked, which is kind of a part, it's another part of this, which was, the um, autopilot we run under, that's one part, but it's more than that, which is we've been through enough life experience in relationships where maybe we don't value ourselves enough or believe in ourselves enough to actually have what we really want, deserve and desire, and so we settle for less than we really want. Or even choose not to be in a relationship, to be single. Because you know, you'd rather not be in a relationship because you don't feel like you can suffer that level, because it's a suffering thing. That's unfortunate. Because frankly, in relationships, the possibility for an amazing experience is very, um, it's very highly possible if you choose well for yourself and choose well for your partner. And this takes a different, um, I'm glad it amuses you, I'm not sure which part you were laughing at there, Della, so maybe you can fill in the blanks of what I, what was, what I was saying that got you, you chuckling. Um, and the challenge for a lot of people is that they don't, see themselves accurately in the mirror. And this is one of those things that I've really become clear about, because I did it myself, so let me be clear about this. I'm not, I'm not speaking from the point of view of theory, I've been through this my experience myself, where I would value myself based upon what I believed was running in my head, the tapes that we run. And this is one of the things we have a bad habit of doing, 
is we tell ourselves lies and we believe them. That's the thing about believing in the lies. We are inherently comparing ourselves against other people. Oh, staying single because you can't deal. Yeah, well, that was true for me for a while. Not true for me now, but it was true for me for a while. So that was another one of the ones I can own up to. So yes, there are people out there like that, I know, because they just can't deal with a relationship. They don't want to deal with else on else's stuff. They make up their life just so, just a sidebar on this point. There are people I know who've got their life just so that if they bring someone else in their life, it's going to mess everything up. So they'd rather stay single than dealing with a relationship. So that's, that's another part of that one too. But again, getting back to the, the lies we tell ourselves that we believe. Yes, part of it is our past. And part of it is our childhood, but we may have been said, told things by our dad or our mom or, or someone else in the family that convinced us that we weren't worthy and deserving of what we... <laughs> yes, they should stay single. You're right, Della. Um, <laughs> it's like, okay, back on track. <laughs> I'm enjoying that, but I also want to keep true to the track. You may have been experienced when you were, when you were a child being... Um, told that you weren't good enough by your parents or by your teachers or by the grades you got in school that somehow you're not good enough and you won't deserve or you're not valid to have what you want and that tape's been running ever since so the jobs you chose as an adult weren't as necessarily as creative or as fulfilling or as powerful as you really would want to do because you don't believe you could do them again you believe the lies instead in relationship I know many people who have chosen to be in relationships that weren't valid because they say you know what as much as I hate the abuse or the hurt or the wounding, I'd rather stay here than risk something worse because I don't think I deserve anything better than this. And this is a challenge a lot of people face and it's disturbing in a way, but I also realize what's going on is that some people, have, some people, I'm using that term generically, but it's like there are people out there, and probably people you know even, although they may not have told you this, they don't believe they're deserving of a relationship that is going to be above what they have because they think they are not worthy of anything more than what they have. Like their value of themselves is low enough, or so low, so low, no, so low, two words, that they would rather um, stay in the pain and the suffering of that relationship than to walk away for something that won't even be better because they don't believe they can have anything better. The thing about it is, it's like, um, uh, what's the fr there's a couple of quotes that's going come through. One is about um, better the devil you know than the devil you don't know. That's one of them where basically you'd rather be in the pain and suffering you're in now than go somewhere else. And the challenge with this is that pain becomes comfortable, as strange as it sounds. When you have something that happens to you repeatedly, you start to numb it out, and then you get just get basically okay with it, you become comfortable. And that is unfortunate because you're limiting your ability to have what you want in life. You're also willing, limiting your ability to stand up and say, no, no more of this, because a lot of this, or a part of this, is standing up for yourself with your single or in a relationship. And this, um, the, the difficulty with standing up for yourself is because you're running tapes in here, in your own head, not mine, but in your own head, that are telling, again, this may be somebody you know, don't want to say it's you, but somebody you might know, where, you've been, where they've been telling themselves that they cannot have what they want and they must suffer because of it somehow. And the wiring is crazy. The, the circuitry, the, the, the beliefs are insane. And again, this sits on top of what I talked about yesterday, because yesterday he was talking about the childhood imprinting that runs as autopilot ever since. But this is another layer of that, which is basically the way we've been trained by environment where we keep hearing things that keep telling us we're not worthy or deserving, so we don't choose to step out of it. And that, unfortunately, is one of these um, unspoken taboos. We don't talk about this stuff, which is why I'm talking about it now. <laughs> we really need to start having a... Um, self-investigation to watch the things we tell ourselves that aren't true because for many of us we've chosen a relationship that sucked um, I had a few of those <laughs> just to be transparent as well many years ago not so much, not so much like in the last uh, last years but certainly when I was younger I didn't know what I I didn't think I deserved it now that was also because my self-image and just to be transparent because you may have the same experience some of you know my this experience when my self-image was such that I didn't believe I was worthy and deserving of a certain look or a certain style or a certain appearance of woman because the way I looked at myself in the mirror I was going, I don't deserve that. That was a lie. But I told myself that. And, I, and I've shown that voice, I've, excuse me, I've, sh I've seen that voice show up again more recently as well. When it's not accurate. I know it's not accurate. 
but I still hear it going, excuse me, but this is not real, this is not valid, and all this sort of stuff. You don't deserve, and you, you don't look this good, and you kind of that, and she's not your league, and all these other things. They're actually lies, because somehow I gave that voice permission to run the show. You may have one too. You may have experienced this, you may be dealing with this, you may be worrying about this. And frankly, um, <laughs> the simple answer is to stop it, but of course, not always easy. If you're dealing with a voice like that, that is still running autopilot inside, running, running through and telling yourself lies that aren't true, but you keep believing them because you keep listening to them and following what they tell you, it's a good time to do some self-investigation. I highly recommend that you look into your own, um, well here, here's, here's an assignment for you, here's an opportunity for you, is, is, this no, is to make note during the day when anything shows up, so any thought that shows up that is a lie to yourself, a negative limiting, um, how do I say this another way? I'm just, sorry, I'm just dropping this in as it comes through, but it's not coming through clearly, so let me ruin one slightly. Okay. As I said, we have, as human beings, generally speaking, a lot of us have a tendency to lie to ourselves and tell us things that aren't true. One of the things to do is to catch the, that, that voice in action. So your homework, if you choose to do it, and your assignment I'm giving you, is to actually spend time being aware of it, to catch that voice in action, basically to listen to what's going on inside. A lot of us don't even listen. A lot of people are actually automatic, again, automatic pilot, running through life, don't even think about it, but they're not getting what they want. Listening to that voice and then writing down what it says in quotes, knowing that it's not true. So you capture it and you put it down. So that way you know that what you've actually had um, expressed is falsehood. Because the thing is, when you start writing down those, those things that you said, you might recognize they come from some other voices, meaning that the, the, the words that you're saying to yourself may have been said originally by a teacher, by a parent, by a boss, by an ex-partner, by somebody who you think has more authority, and realizing that you took that on for yourself, and you haven't even seen them in 20 years, or 30 years, but you still carry this language inside of, of what's limiting you, and it's not true. When you start doing that, you start to realize that a lot of stuff you're running inside, the tapes that you're running inside, those thoughts that are inside, telling you you can't have it, aren't even your voice. And this is where things change. When you become aware that this is not your voice, this is somebody else's voice being wired in because you've believed them so many times, or somebody told you so many times you got convinced of it, you can start to say no. And when you start to say no to that voice, and you start to contradict, or in fact you start to counter respond to that voice, when the voice says, you know, you're not worthy, you can't have what you want, this is not going to work, you say, you know what, you're wrong. I deserve this, I, I, I'm valuable, I, I, I'm fully deserving of everything I want. Doing that will start to numb out the voice, excuse me, not numb out, will start to cancel out the voice. And doing that will help you get where you want to go. Now, I'm not saying this is an easy thing to do, or that can be easy, but it's something you can start practicing even now. If you want more help with how this works, I can give you a couple of recommendations. In fact, a couple of things I'll put in the comments. As always, I'm going to put links in to support you with what you want in your life. I'll put a link in for a discovery session with me so you can find out more about how I work because I can help you with this. Secondly, um, I'm actually writing an email right now to my email list about your best life, the, the offering I put out there. In it is a whole thing about affirmations and intentions that you start to reinforce with visual um, references. I'll put a link in the comments for that because it may in fact help you to really get where you want to go. Um, and also how to clear up that voice. But again, your homework if you choose to do it is to watch that voice inside. I should say, listen to that voice inside with the awareness that it's lying to you. So be your own polygraph. Recognize what's being said inside your head that is false to write it down because when you finish writing it, oh, this is the other thing, I forgot this. The other thing, when you finish writing it down, and we finish the exercise is to crunch the paper up, not writing it on the computer, on paper please, crunch the paper up and then burn it. The intention is to vaporize and release this limiting thought because it's not helping you where you want to go. And also countermanding or, or um, counteracting this voice by telling yourself the truth in that moment. It becomes a practice and you do this more often and as that voice says something negative or as a lie and you counteract it with a positive voice of truth, it starts to change your wiring and eventually you start shifting 
shifting, whichever way you want to do that, your mindset into where you want to go. This will change your life. And you won't have to listen to the lies anymore again. That was interesting. I wasn't planning on saying that, but that's what came through. So with that, I thank you for watching. I'm going to give a couple of pieces of information right up the top as well before I sign off. One, this is a Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I invite you to come join me every day, seven days a week. If you watch the replays, you can find them on my business page on Facebook, also on YouTube, and also on my podcast. And I'll give you all the addresses, the email list, you, the um, links so you can find them. So first of all, my personal page on Facebook is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. You can find my broadcast live. My archives go onto my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. So you can watch all of them there. Alternatively, you can find them on my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby. My name is everyone on social media. I should say every social media on my platform is my name. On YouTube, you can find me at Barry Selby and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. You can listen to them all, sort them through them, watch them, check them out as you want. Um, I think the way you get them is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. And finally, I have a podcast which I've been opening up on iTunes called Messages from the Masculine. Please subscribe to that. Oh, and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. And on my podcast, I have the audio versions. I'm building out a library of those that I'm doing there so you can listen to them when you want. And with that, I thank you for watching. And take the homework on, I invite you to, and the links I'll put in the comments again for the Discovery Session and Your Best Life. And uh, that'll be that. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for being with me, and I hope this made some sense. If you want to share it with anybody, please do so. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below, and I'll respond when I sign off. And with that, I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.